Now that potential based Dirichlet method of applying the boundary conditions is not the only way of uh, closing a vortex panel method. There's another way, which is the Neumann boundary condition method, which is velocity based rather than potential based. So we now have our panel, and we choose a control point again that defines a normal. Um, sorry, actually, this is not a very helpful picture. Here is our panels. We pick a field point just outside the panel midpoint, so out in the flow, and here we sort of have a local tangent and a local normal and I. So we pick n minus 1 field points just outside the panel midpoints, and then we set directly applying the velocity condition on the boundary ui and xi plus vi and yi equals zero. So this is the flow tangency condition. We then also set the cutta condition, again, gamma 1 plus gamma n equals zero. And then we solve the n by n system of equations for the unknown gamma j. So here, the advantage is that we have a smaller system of equations and we're not introducing any extra variables. But, as we'll see, there's a small issue that pops up with this approach, though ultimately, in the end, it usually doesn't have much impact. So now we're going to have a different aerodynamic influence coefficient matrix, which we can call Bij. Uh, and this is multiplied here by gamma j, and that gives us negative v infinity dot and i. And this bij is related to the aij the, in the original aerodynamic coefficient matrix as follows. So bij is defined to be the partial Derivative of Aij Bxi plus the, the other partial derivative times the normal components. So if we call these uh, panel midpoint field points our control points, then the right hand side um, from the above equation gives you infinity and x i plus v infinity and y i and if we bring the other part to the uh, same side of the equation this is now a sum from n this is just an equivalent way of writing that matrix expression where i goes from 1 to n minus 1 and we combine that with gamma 1 plus gamma n equals 0, which is the cut of condition. Now, regardless of which of these types of boundary conditions we use, once the gamma j are obtained, we can compute all the other quantities that we care about, such as the velocity components, the pressure, and the lift. So let's see how that's done once the gamma i j are known. So for the velocity, u of x and y, so this is now anywhere in the full field, is u infinity plus sum over d k j k x of x and y j. 
gamma j and v of x and y is v infinity plus the sum dk j dy of x and y gamma j. For pressure, we can use Bernoulli So PI equals G naught minus one half rho UI squared plus VI squared because the stagnation pressure is constant throughout the flow field since it's a potential flow which is both irritational, inviscid, steady, and incompressible. On the surface of the airfoil, which is where we care the most about the pressure, the velocity can be obtained just from ui and vi, which is actually just derived from the uh, control point value of the vortex strength, which is the average of the surrounding, or the one on either side, gamma j's. Now, to get the overall force, the x force is sum over uh, these i panel midpoints of the pressure and x i delta s i and exactly similarly but with the y component of the normals we can get the y force And the drag, which is defined, of course, to be in the direction of, or parallel to the incoming free stream. This is fx cos alpha plus fy sine alpha. And this is essentially zero. Why do I say essentially? Well, because it's discretized. It equals zero as delta s becomes very small. The lift is the opposite, fx, negative fx, sine alpha, plus fy, cos alpha. Now more details on implementing panel methods are beyond the scope of this course, um, but you're going to be able to do a simple application of some of these formulas and calculating uh, flow field quantities from a panel solution um, in homework number two. Uh, so some, this is not just all background. You will be applying some of this in the course directly.